Well, on the conclusion of Tuesday evening's darts here at the Winmore World Masters, uh, I've managed to get my two stage colleagues with me to go over the evening's action at the uh, last 16 stage of the men's competition, but we will be polite and do ladies first. Quarterfinals were played on Tuesday evening, and we had a big, big upset in the very first match. Nick Rolls, you were mm. there to witness uh, Sarah Roberts of the West Midlands defeat Dieter Hebman, the number one seed. Yeah, I thought um, Sarah played really, really nicely. She kept with Dieter all the way and just got that feeling that at some point Dieter's going to break away and it just didn't happen. Um, Sarah's finishing was really good. I think that it, with the exception of one leg, she went out very quickly. Really, really good performance. Best I've seen Sarah play on the stage, personally. Yeah, big humble upset. Opinion. Totally. And we nearly had another upset because Corinne oh. Hammond of Australia won the British Open on Sunday and then faced the international from Japan, uh, Mikuru Suzuki. Yeah, Mikuru had so many darts. She led 3-2 and then had, I think it was 15 darts in leg six to win the game and then a further nine darts to win the game in, in leg seven. And, and to be fair, Corinne at the end, and she talked to me throughout the game, typically, of Corinne. <laughs> but she, she said, at the end, that's all my lives gone. Oh, of course. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised that you can keep counting. It was kind of like a Devon Locke moment. Oh, it, it was. Really, it really yeah. was. I mean, she had so many chances. but And some of them were, were, were actually right on the wire as well. There were some where you thought, oh, maybe it's the nurse. But then they were so close, yeah. it actually... I, I just, I don't know, it just wasn't well, her day. No. Wasn't her day. Well, it was Lorraine Winstanley's day. She's been in great form. Anthony Dundas is here with us. He refereed the second two uh, quarterfinals in the ladies' competition. Anastasia the Bromoslova, the birthday girl, went out 4-3 to Lorraine Winstanley. Are you impressed with Lorraine and what you've seen so far? Lorraine's on sparkling form. Recently, she's she done the double header at Celsi, and the, the form has stayed with her. She played really, really well, and... It could have went either way. That was a real itchy peachy kind of game. Both had chances, but a pleasure to referee. And as I say, could have went either way. And well done to Lorraine. Is itchy peachy a Glasgow term? It is. I'm yes. not familiar with that one. <laughs> and then the defending champion, uh, Trina Gulliver, hasn't been in the best of form of late. I was pleased to see her make it to the stage uh, in the defence of her title, but she faced an experienced campaigner in Trisha Wright. Another great game, and Trisha showed why she's been a, a season campaigner for so long. Trina flashes a brilliance, but maybe just lacking a little bit in the consistency. But yeah, Trisha hit the shot she had to hit and that's why she's in the semi-finals. Well, the defending champion out in the ladies' competition. We also had the last 16 of the men's on Tuesday evening and the number one C took to the stage, first of all. Mark McGinney facing uh, the Northern Ireland captain in Neil Duff. Great match to start things off. It was. It was. Uh, I, I was. We were just speaking before we came on air that looking at the eight games that we had tonight, I personally thought that was the best game of the night. I'm not saying it's the best performance, but I thought it was the best game. It literally went down to the wire. And Mark, I guess his experience, Neil won 93 in that very last leg, decided he was going to play the 19s and didn't quite work out for him. And therefore, you know, Mark had... Uh, that saw it home with that, the very last leg. In fact, they played all 15 legs, the maximum number of legs that they could play in that game as well. So, Absolutely. yeah, well done to Mark. Yep, so the number one seed will be back in the quarters tomorrow. He'll face Martin Phillips, who who seemed to breeze through. The former champion, he's obviously won this before against uh, Tone Graeber. But uh, Ross Montgomery, who picked up that British Open title, Anthony, your fellow Scotsman, looked brilliant on Sunday. He's been in great form all year. 3-0 defeat to James Hurrell. Struggling a little bit with his elbow. He, I think he said he was practising for a couple of hours before the match and he felt something go click. And ever since then, he's been in a great deal of pain. But fair play to him for getting up and actually completing the game. You know, mm -hmm. players have come before and succumbed to the injury, if you like. They've not been able to play. But no, just it wasn't Ross up there. But fair play to James Hurrell. We, I think he knew Ross was struggling, but didn't let it affect him too much. He just concentrated on his own game and closed out the victory. Yeah, it's such a shame for Ross being in such good form, but as you rightly say, credit to James Hurrell because he, all he can do is do his job and get up there and win. Uh, we saw a new face in the German, Gabriel Clemens, mm. defeat another new face who we will be seeing at Lakeside the ne from the Netherlands, yeah. Chris Landman. So we weren't sure how that would go and the German was really impressive. I, I thought he was very impressive. He was very... Focused. Sometimes as a referee, you can feel when a player's really focused and he was absolutely bang on his game. He took out a brilliant 140, two treble 18s and double 16, which is an unusual way to go on 140. Um, 
one or two players have done it before, so it didn't catch me out on this occasion. However, it, it was great to see it, and yeah, a really good. That that's he's a bit of a dark horse in that top half. I think he, he could come through the next game. Yeah, he faces James Harrell, and that's mm. going to be interesting. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, it really yeah. will be indeed. Uh, the the first game in the bottom half was particularly entertaining that we had Jim Williams take on Tony O'Shea who hasn't been on the TV stage as much as we would expect of late he's really had a knee problem had the knee operation we won't go into that now Nick otherwise we'll be here all (laughs) evening uh, regarding ailments at at that time in a gentleman's life but uh, (laughs) thank you (laughs) (laughs) but Tony was he, he looked down and out Jim chance after chance after chance is a repeat of the Corin and Mikuru. Yes. He had that many goes, but he just didn't have the luck that Corin had. Uh, and the theory that I had was, uh, we saw Jim Williams, if you were watching online on Winmore TV on Saturday, the British Classic final. He led 4-1, he lost to Jamie Hughes 6-5. Yeah. And you could see when he was on those doubles, I'm sure that must have been in his mind. As it turned out, Tony himself has starts for the match. And then Jim, yeah. William nicks, Jim Williams nicks it at the Very end. Very much so. Very much so. You don't have to have these blinding averages to have a, an entertaining game and I think that was one I mean we saw you're was. right we saw so many missed doubles but it was great entertainment mm. um, another Scotsman Anthony we'll come back to you of course <laughs> Cameron Menzies really good game against Mark McGrath I remember those two playing in the Lakeside Qualifier last year the final That's and right, Mark yeah. defeated Cameron they were hugging for about 20 minutes after that match I remember it so well they've met again on the Winmore World Masters stage tonight and again, a 20-minute hug, and he did a shave after that game. <laughs> uh, Mark showed why he was at Lakeside. Basically, he played really, really well tonight. But I think the scoring power and the finishing of Cameron just showed why he's number eight in the world. He played really, really well. And it's the form that Cameron's been on recently. Obviously, got to the final of the British Open Sunday, a, a tournament he was defending. Yeah. And I think all the pressure that he had on him to get the points, to get to Lakeside, was kind of off his shoulders at that point. Mm-hmm. And he was just, he's playing really well and he's not phased by anything. Maybe he needs to sort out his stage antics a little bit, just concentrate on the board, but I can't fault it. It was a great performance and deserves to be in the quarterfinals. Is there a comment you wanted to make there, Nick? It was. I think that um, I think the Lakeside draw comes up tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Is it, well, uh, certainly within the next few days, the well, draw for Lakeside will be made. You never know. We're going to surprise people oh. online, I think. Oh, right. Okay. Maybe it'll be live on Tungsten Tales. Ooh, we don't know. Well, there you go. But Cameron is one that the guys that aren't seeded, there'll be some seeds where you think, okay, Cameron will not be one of those. Uh, he has played so, so well over the last yeah, year. Really in good form. And another man in great form is the pole, uh, Christoph Ratajski. I've seen him all through the year on the Euro Tour, just looking really solid. Had a good lakeside. Was unlucky to lose yeah, to Labanowskis. He was. He's come here. He's a real threat, isn't he? He defeated Alan Suter, who's very capable himself. Three sets to nil. Yeah, Alan, Alan had uh, two darts at double 18, literally on the wire, to make it one set all in the game. And it just... I said mentioned earlier about referees having a feeling and I just felt that Alan went off the boil just a little bit there. It was almost like the pressure because it's only the best of three legs in a set. The, the pressure is that great on the players. Can I just mention also that Christoph, of course, has done me the biggest favour in the world. Two one seven fours. I'll pass it to you, Anthony. A certain referee quite enjoys calling those and they've gone to the wrong man, it seems. Indeed. We'll move on to our final match of Tuesday evening, which was the defending champion, the world number one, the Lakeside world champion, Glenn Durrant, looks absolutely in scintillating form once again. Absolutely. A um, lot of pressure on Glenn this weekend, or this week, sorry. He's going for three in a row, three different venues. He's wanting to emulate Bob Anderson and getting the hat trick of titles. And Martin Adams. And Martin Adams as well, of course. <laughs> but he's just went up there tonight and showed why he's world number one he showed why he's world champion he played absolutely fantastic darts secured his place 3-0 against a, an opponent who could have caused him some problems Yuri Doister's no mug he he can throw a dart he's a very good player just didn't play quite as well as he had to to beat Glenn tonight well we've gone for the extended version of this quick review hopefully you're still with us uh, I'm going to ask a couple of quick questions we are going to have a new Wimmer World Masters ladies champion Who's it going to be? We have Sarah Roberts, Corinne Hammond, Lorraine Stanley, Trisha Wright. Semis and final on Wednesday. Give me a champion, guys. 
Lorraine. I think Lorraine's form over the last two and three months has just been so good, so consistent, I think is the word that I'm looking for. Doesn't mean that any one of the other three couldn't have an absolutely fantastic day. And of course, Lorraine got beat at the weekend. So anything could happen. But on consistency, I'll go Lorraine. I'm inclined to agree, but I think after tonight, Corinne Hammond will have something to prove. <laughs> Corinne Hammond could come out on Wednesday, all guns blazing, and could produce the, the performance of a lifetime. So either one of those two. A couple of good shouts. So we won't pick winners here, but four great quarterfinals in the men's competition on Wednesday. Mark McGinney against Martin Phillips. Last year's finalist against a former champion. That should be great. James Hurrell, we've mentioned, is going to be taking on the German. A bit of an unknown quantity still in Gabriel Clemens. Jim Williams takes on Cameron Menzies. A Celtic clash there. Look forward to that one. And Glenn Durrant, defending champion, now has to get past the Polish eagle, Krzysztof Ratajski. Uh, before we leave you, we must congratulate our two Winmore World Masters youth champions uh, on Tuesday, who were Bo Greaves, the Yorkshire lass, third time lucky, twice a runner-up, made it a win at last. Still just 13 years of age, and I'm saying at last, but she is a champion. And the young man from Germany, Nico Blum, uh, won the boys' title. So congratulations to those. I uh, hope you'll be joining us on Wednesday for the conclusion of the 2017 Winmore World Masters. Uh, my colleagues here, Anthony Dundas and Nick Rolls, will of course remain impartial up on the stage, but I'm sure you're going to be cheering on everybody that's playing. See you soon. <laughs>